what are we talking about when we talk about medical cannabis? We're talking about THC and CBD, the two biggest chemicals in the marijuana plant, okay? They work on two receptor systems. They have receptors, locks, and keys in your brain that makes things work. The first set of receptors is the so-called CB1 receptors. They're in your brain, okay? Uh, this is a very complex slide. I'm sorry, guys. So you got two nerve cells talking to each other. Presynaptic neuron and the postsynaptic neuron. This is what they call the synapse, okay? This guy is sending little packets of all these chemicals over. Dopamine, norepinephrine. Dopamine is your reward thing. If a little kid walks up and gives you a big hug, and you say, oh, that's dopamine, okay? Norepinephrine, 5-HT serotonin, uh, is your mood, okay? You, if, if you jack those guys up, uh, people who are depressed tend to feel better. GABA and glutamate are dealing with anxiety and with sleep. If you get those guys adjusted properly, you sleep better, and you're, you're just generally less jumpy throughout the day. Okay. All these systems, every single one of those systems, has on it a CB1 receptor receptor for our own endocannabinoids. Your brain and my brain are making chemicals that hit these receptors all the time, okay? That's the one that THC hits when you take a pump on a joint and you feel good. That's it, your CB1 receptor. How, and it's just basically where you give a little feedback. Okay, I'm driving home, okay? If you're driving home, your spouse texts you, right? So pick up dinner, right? Being a good person, you pull off to the side of the road and you text back, so what do you want? And then they text back and they say, you know, pick up a roast chicken and a Caesar salad. All of a sudden, with a little bit of feedback, that whole system is working better, right? If, if, if you leave a guy to go to Wegmans to pick up 10 pounds of frozen beef and a carrot, it's not going to work, okay? A little bit of feedback though makes that whole thing work well. And that's what the endocannabinoid system does on all of these important brain signaling systems. It provides that little bit of feedback that just tunes those systems uh, to win our experience over 3,000 people is that it's impossible to predict for any one person what combination of THC is going to work. You just can't. So what we do instead is we sort of we sort of give folks a recipe. We say, okay, look, you know, I can't bake, right? But if you give me a recipe, if I start with step one and finish at step 12, I'll have a cake at the end of it that you could probably eat. Similarly, we start with a recommendation for any one person of THC. We start with a recommendation for any one person of CBD. Work out a daily schedule, take this at this time, that at that time. Please keep a diary. Just get a 99 cent notebook, write a bunch of columns on it. Most importantly, you call us and we get some feedback based on how your body responds, how you're sleeping, what's your pain like, what's your mood like, okay, what's your level of activity like. We then adjust it, try that again. Two more weeks, we get another call. Looping through that system is the way to do it. That's what we call smart tuning. And the tables are that for both acute pain, post-operative pain, for example, you go out and bang yourself up, uh, the THC and CBD are really good for that. You can decrease the amount of nonsteroids, decrease the amount of opioids, decrease the amount of Tylenol you take if you throw THC and CBD at your acute pain. In particular, for chronic pain, it works really, really well. One nice thing about the way that the endocannabinoid system works in your brain, unlike the opioid system, okay, unlike the system that is hit by oxycontin and fentanyl and all those wonderful things, you plateau out, okay? You tend to take a certain dose of THC and a certain dose of CBD. Once we figure out that works for you, people ride that dose for years and years and years with excellent results. Unlike opiates where you gotta keep going up regardless, okay? Very often, the first thing that gets better when we start adjusting THC and CBD is sleep. People are finally able to sleep a couple hours at night, and that makes the whole ball of wax better. Uh, probably we need more CBD for a longer time. A lot of folks go to a gas station, buy some CBD, take it for a week and say, ah, CBD doesn't work, throw it away. Okay, there's a way to do CBD, which we have learned and are still learning about, which involves a lot of CBD over a long period of time. A good six to eight weeks is about the time you need to be taking a lot of it for to decide whether it works or not. Uh, and finally, again, we have to be interactive. If some guy gives you a certificate, says, talk to the pharmacy, see me in a year, Guess what? It's not going to work.